Awesome. I think so. We're on live. So, uh, hi everyone. So, thanks for taking time and joining us for this session. So, we're here to talk about uh, functional safety and uh, the importance it plays in the process automation industry itself, right? So, I'm Nitin, and I'll be your host and moderator for today. And uh, I have with me two of our uh, certified functional safety experts, Prashant and Saran, and it gives me great sort of uh, pleasure to sort of introduce our uh, experts to this forum and uh, um, I'll probably hand it over to you guys. So Prashant, there may be a couple of quick sort of points on introducing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi all. It's Prashant here and uh, I'm a certified functional safety engineer and working here in Uttunga as a technical manager and taking care of different compliance, pre-compliance testing and certification and also different protocol. Uh, level uh, and uh, the required support in terms of functional safety design and implementation for yeah. mm -hmm. Sarang. Awesome. I think, yeah, just over to you, Sarang, maybe a couple of quick, quick points on you. Yeah. yeah. Hi, all. Uh, myself, Sarang here. I started my career like as a uh, former engineer 11 years before. Mm -hmm. Now I'm working as a technical manager here in Otunga Technologies. So I, I mainly concentrated on like uh, device engineering and industrial protocols and you know development design and development of that. So uh, welcome you all to this live session. Yeah, thanks. Awesome, thanks. So uh, before we I think start and get into the questions and the pointers that we have today, then maybe a couple of quick logistics, right? So this session will run for about thirty minutes and. Uh, and we sort of aim to convey to the listeners on the importance of functional safety itself and particularly what role it plays in the process industry and uh, possibly even highlight towards the end on how uh, Utunga can help you on your adoption journey, right? So uh, I think I'm sure uh, uh, each of those points will be covered over time and, uh, uh, and, and also like always, please feel free to drop in your questions and comments and uh, we'll get to this towards the, the end of the sessions once we've finished whatever we wanted to talk about, right? So, you know, I think the first question, I think for you, Prashant, so wherein, uh, uh, what is functional safety itself, right? And what are these different safety standards that exist? And uh, this can be general, nothing specific to process, something like that. So any quick points yeah. there will be helpful for us, yeah? Yeah, so uh, this functional safety is kind of a part of the overall safety system uh, or piece of uh, equipment or a piece of subsystem and it depends on the automatic protection uh, which takes place uh, in order to uh, achieving achieve the absence of any unwanted or unreasonable risk or taking that existing risk into a tolerable level mm -hmm. so that the causes uh, which uh, means of uh, happens through the hazards uh, will be um, in a uh, expected way. So mm -hmm. uh, by uh, this automatic um, protection system, it needs to uh, respond correctly to its inputs so mm -hmm. that the risk uh, will um, really will not impact uh, anything on the system or anything on the human uh, life or human mm -hmm. um, uh, things in the uh, field. And uh, basically, um, these errors might be due to any human errors or any hardware failures or any software failures or any operational or environmental stress related aspects. Uh, there, are, um, uh, there is a core standard IC 61508 and uh, there are multiple substandards under that with respect to different um, uh, industries like uh, IC 61511 for process industries and mm -hmm. IEC 60601 for medical devices, like that ISO 26262 uh, for uh, automotive and uh, for machinery IEC 62061. So uh, today we'll uh, discuss more on IEC 61511, uh, which okay. is uh, more focused into the uh, industrial processes. Yeah. Sure, awesome. Yeah, thanks Prashant for highlighting those different standards. So I think uh, uh, if, if we sort of summarize there, right, so uh, safety in a general form by itself forms a critical pillar in industry 4.0 applications and uh, and identifying those issues at an equipment level can prevent these adverse effects and accidents that uh, can be prevented using these uh, standards that uh, you mentioned, right? So, um, so I think oh, I'll probably shoot this to Saran, right? So for uh, 
So we know at a high level what we're trying to talk today, and uh, what we'd like to sort of understand is uh, what is the specific need for functional safety apart from the generic thing that Prashant mentioned, and uh, particularly in the process industry side of things, right? Like so, that is uh, something that's very relevant and in the industry that we operate in today, right? So. Can you highlight some quick points there so that uh, we can get some insights? Yeah. So here, uh, when we talk about functional safety, the main a- aspect is to you know the reduce the risk mm-hmm. or uh, you know uh, reduce the risk to a tolerance level, which will not create any consequences or uh, any kind of you know disaster. So mm-hmm. uh, when we talk about process industries, right? You know the industry where the primary production process is uh, either continuous or it could be you know occur, occur in batch by batch but we cannot distinguish it it will be a continuous process always so what mm-hmm. happens in the process industry is in a very high level the raw materials or the inputs come comes into a system and it goes through a couple of you know uh, components and ultimately the product will be uh, you know uh, or the end product will be the output of the system so mm-hmm. there are lots of uh, components in between such as uh, if you if you know about the automation pyramid there yeah. are uh, the ent- entire process industry has uh, you know a different kind of machineries then different kind of devices some field devices like sensors actuators then on top of that control devices control systems and there will be a communication from one layer to another layer so uh, and on top of that uh, there could be you know uh, a manpower or operators we always say <laughs> and the procedure and paperwork, uh, and lot of things are involved. So uh, before uh, you know uh, going to the exact answer, I would, I would like to show you one you know, quick video on this, mm-hmm. where it uh, you know, details about the communication protocols between the, the full system. To the Yeah, uh, as as uh, as per the video, you have seen that uh, that particular automation pyramid, and you know there are field devices, and it is communicating to you know next uh, control uh, layer, mm-hmm. where uh, there are you know communication protocols involved, which is one single component of the entire process industry. So mm-hmm. if the data which is going through that communication protocol is getting corrupted, that can lead to a, a ma- massive you know consequences. So. Uh, since this process industry has a lot of component, there's a certain degree of you know risk in every activity that is undertaken. So, which could be uh, the machine fault or system error or system failure or any random error or operational or operator error, or it could be environmental risk. So, the functional safety is something which we talk about risk and how to mitigate it. So. Mm-hmm. Like this thing, like if the since there is a lot of system involved and there, there could be a risk, so the mm-hmm. functional set is very important for a process industry. Sure, awesome. I think so. I think now uh, we sort of have uh, a, a high level understanding of what is functional safety and and what goes into sort of probably these different standards in these different industries and also the need behind it, right? So I think maybe we can dive into a little more. Uh, uh, technical detail of how this comes about right so uh, so i think again probably uh, uh, this is for again sarang itself like again wherein uh, you mentioned about the need for functional safety right but uh, is it a sort of uh, compulsory and statutory requirement in the the industry itself that is imposed by these uh, regulatory bodies uh, we cannot say it is mandatory Okay. But uh, we all know so it is, uh, the evaluation, the like evolution of uh, functional safety is like you know we had one example from the past uh, like uh, Bhopal disaster. So mm-hmm. it was like very huge and the, the consequences was very huge in terms of cost and you know the uh, life of human beings, right? Mm-hmm. So from that you know era, it started like you know functional safety evolving from that uh, time onwards. Mm-hmm. It is one of the examples. There are a lot of other examples. And the organizations and the you know authority are uh, now started taking it into a very uh, serious level. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, since uh, the functional safety talks about mitigating the risk so mm-hmm. it, it is not surprising to see that the organizations are you know uh, taking it seriously sure sure got it. and and uh, if you see in the in the market the uh, there is a steady rise in the uh, market for functional safety Mm-hmm. predominantly across uh, maybe in uh, oil and gas plant along with manufacturing power plants and healthcare uh, industries then pharmaceutical industries or uh, petrochemical industries mm-hmm. so the the growth uh, can also be also uh, can be seen in the latest uh, market research what it says mm-hmm. that it was around uh, uh, 4 billion uh, usd mm-hmm. uh, in 2019 and it is expected to be 7 plus billion uh, for by 2024 okay so function safety market is uh, expanding means that in the need of that in the industry is you know evolving right so sure. and and one more aspect is like uh, even when um, there is no legal requirement for a component of a product or the entire system to be function safety certified in many cases this is required by the end users that is one other aspect and uh, there are there are uh, some regulatory authorities like they they you know it is required that the system should be functionally functional safety certified mm-hmm. and and moreover consider if you are an oem or you uh, know you are you wanted to enter into a marketplace so when you talk about the global market or then the functional safety certification or you know compliance is much required and also we can add one more point here uh, just coming into my mind now that uh, you know there are uh, some insurance companies also which may require the whole system acceptance that may include functional safety before they offer the coverage so by by uh, you know uh, considering all the aspect it is considered as a mandatory requirement but it's not a legal requirement in most cases understood okay so sure. awesome i think uh, uh, so probably this this question i think i have for uh, prashant where uh, uh, as a yeah. functional safety certified engineer right like so typically wa- can you give us a little more insight into the life cycle of mm. the the safety uh, implementation design and and what goes into like these certification things and and also maybe a little on what your role is in specific to this right so this will sort of give our audience a little more perspective Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, uh, I would like to uh, take an example, and will uh, would like to uh, detail on that. So, consider uh, in a system or in a tank where you will be monitoring uh, the temperature. Uh, basically, you will be having a thermal sensor to monitor the temperature of the system, and if that goes to overheat, uh, the temperature sensor will be taking care of. Uh, with a certain software it will cut off the system so that it will ensure the system will go into a safe state but in some other case where you will go with an insulation instead of a sensor um, then uh, you will be ensuring that safety so here in this case if you have a thermal sensor which will take care of, of that automatic protection this is functional safety and if you have an insulation uh, just to have that uh, safety it is only safety it's not a functional safety so no. as a system integrator and uh, as a certified functional safety trained engineers we would li- like we will be um, uh, helping the manufacturers in identifying uh, the criticality and uh, there are like multiple parameters like um, based on the risks and hazards what are the consequences and what is the frequency of uh, that presence um, in that hazardous zone and what is the exposure time and uh, what are the possibilities of avoiding this kind of consequences uh, in the hazardous event and sometimes even probability of that unwanted failures because mm-hmm. by adding the functional safety measures we will be uh, addressing all the expected occurrences but there might be chance of probability of unwanted occurrences so uh, as a certified safety engineers we will be definitely um, help uh, manufacturers in terms of completely designing uh, the seal certified designs where uh, this will able to measure uh, how system um, is uh, designed uh, in terms of 
uh, considering the risk reduction factors and mm-hmm. how it is meeting or how it is making the system uh, into the tolerable risk level um, all these sort of things yeah got it okay uh, so there are, uh, basically there are four uh, safety levels um, uh-huh. in uh, process industry uh, under 61511 uh, um there are like still one two three four basically it will uh, give an idea or it will give that measurement to the safety level and like these certifications um, might be uh, for uh, from the component level or it might be a for piece of software it can be for a subsystem and it can uh, be for a whole system as well so uh, this will ensure um, the system uh, will be safe at all the time and if there are any um, unidentified risk occurs, it will it will be taking care of necessary automatic protection in place so that it will ensure the end user will be in a safer state. Sure. So I think uh, Prasant, so you uh, you mentioned about these different parameters and the different uh, sill levels, like you mentioned, right? One, two, three, yeah. four, or something. So um, typically, like what goes in, like how does that? sort of map around like in terms of uh, what parameter decides uh, the relevant sort of sill level in that case yeah so uh, when we start analyzing the product or the system what we are going to design uh, basically there are parameters like you know, the risks and hazards involved where this uh, system will be deployed so based on that if that particular risk occurs what are the consequences what mm-hmm. are the what is the frequency of presence of that mm-hmm. hazards and exposure time and mm-hmm. what are what is the probability of those occurrences so these mm-hmm. are the major criteria or parameters which will help to design the particular uh, safety integrity system uh, mm-hmm. with the required safety functions so that it will uh, ensure uh, your system is safe at all the time got it. Okay, maybe uh, if just leading from that, right? So, uh, yeah. so you mentioned about the 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 sill implementation or uh, the 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 sort of uh, relevance for a particular device or something like that, right? But um, is it applicable for only those devices, or as or how does it work as a if you want to say if you want to sill certify an entire uh, process or a system itself that has multiple devices like this? Yeah, so uh, this certification is not only for a single component or a single subsystem. It's okay. including process, including device, system and subsystem. So as I was mentioning, uh, even for a, a simple sensor to a system and in terms of your process, documentation, everything has to cover in terms of uh, safety standards, guidelines, and you should have all the plan, um, procedures, checklist to ensure uh, your devices will meet uh, the functional safe designs and it will act accordingly. Understood. Okay. I think uh, um, maybe I think over to you, Saran, for this question, right? So, where it like I think what what uh, Prashant was specifying about the the cell implementation on a device level as a process level or a system level itself, right? Uh, let's say if an OEM itself want to sort of uh, deploy uh, or uh, use their devices in these hazardous environments or risk prone areas and want to design the the functional safety uh, uh, in their sort of system right uh, can you state some of these uh, uh, prerequisites or or the different sort of uh, measures or the processes that they have to put in place to implement functional safety itself I'm sorry, my mic was muted. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. There are there are uh, many many considerations which we need to take. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them are coming in my mind right now. So uh, consider you you are an OEM and you know a device manufacturer. That's what you are questioning. Exactly. Yes. And uh, you are going to you know uh, uh, deploy this into some hazardous areas, and we need to plan for a functional safety design. Yes. Right. Okay, so the the first thing is there in the question itself where you know the where your device is going to sit, what is the environment where the system is going to deploy. So mm-hmm. you need to have uh, the details of that whether those aspects we need to take care for the design, and uh, 
what uh, when when it is a device so uh, obviously that is going to perform some kind of functions so yep. we need to have an you know, additional safety functions to achieve the functional safety for example uh, some valve control or something and if it is not controlling what we should do that aspect mm-hmm. we need to take care as a safe we call it as safety functions so we mm-hmm. need to define those safety function uh, before uh, designing that particular device and uh, we need to have the details about the application of safety function as a protection maybe mm-hmm. uh, there are some kind of devices or safety function which or safe uh, risk if if you talk about risk it may come uh, once in a year as per our you know uh, okay, initial okay. analysis we mm-hmm. call it as low demand and it could be okay. more than one time or three time or two like multiple times it can come maybe if you consider a nuclear plant or something so it could mm-hmm. be a continuous risk or sure. continuous do so that uh, uh, details we should have as part of the design then uh, consider uh, the other aspect is uh, consider your the system or the plant or the device is going to be a failure mode mm-hmm. so we cannot avoid failing anything the thing is mm-hmm. like uh, we what we talk about as a functional safety engineer is not to avoid the risk mm-hmm. we'll the, the the frequency of the risk and the consequences of the risk that mm-hmm. has to be reduced into a tolerance level that is what we are talking about we cannot right. make 100% uh, you know risk proof so mm-hmm. we need to have that you know what is a failure behavior of uh, the device and what could be the expected response of that particular device so that mm-hmm. details we should have and uh, since the this device is being a single component of the entire plant so mm-hmm. it will be having some hardware connections or software connections maybe interfaces with other devices or some yeah. other constraints will have so that aspect also like that should be you know the safety communication should be established so whatever data we are sending that should be you know safety protocol or something that mm-hmm. that aspect we should consider mm-hmm. and uh, again one more thing is uh, maybe some some uh, operators or human being obviously will mm-hmm. be operating this particular thing so how this device is going to interface or communicate with that particular operator mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there is a risk uh, everything cannot be taken or controlled by automatically sometime there will be an you know, intervention from human being or operator is needed so the mm-hmm. device has to give some kind of you know uh, alarms or you know, uh, sure. communication to the uh, operator so that is one aspect uh, which mm-hmm. we need to consider and uh, when we uh, when if the device is a functional safety device it there is a must have feature that uh, it should have a periodic testing or periodic diagnosis of uh, like self diagnosis that is mm-hmm. a must have feature for that and there are very generic there are you know country or region specific uh, requirements also we need to consider these are the some okay. which i remember sure awesome okay i think uh, now that we have sort of uh, an overview on what the prerequisites are and what goes into sort of uh, uh, like implementing functional safety itself in these devices right so i think uh, i think this one's for prashant so uh, so what what are the different types of uh, uh, documentations and processes that uh, uh, the 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 sort of oem has to have in place before they sort of uh, implement functional safety i think that's a very critical sort of uh, thing right so if you can shed some light on that that would be helpful yeah so uh, if you see uh, the overall uh, life cycle uh, there are uh, four stages like analysis uh, realization and operation and uh, maintain, management uh, so basically uh, during your first stage of analysis uh, based on the target system what we have to design uh, we have to analyze and we have to document all these uh, requirement specification of particular uh, design and um, we have to identify what all are the risks and hazards involved that also we have to document it and we have to uh, address the required safety functions so mm-hmm. in each stage all these documentations with respect to the requirements and safety functions then uh, we will be having the safety uh, requirement specifications and all sort of design documentations during the realization and each uh, document uh, review reviews documents and uh, different safety function details 
and equipment and their properties component details data sheets all this has to be uh, documented with required circuit diagrams manuals flow diagrams and how you are going to uh, verify and how you are going to test all your um, system that test plan test uh, suit test cases functional acceptance testing cases test results and uh, in the even uh, in the later stage when you go for um, deploying even you should have that installation checklist and uh, the test report of that preliminary uh, validations and installation and commissioning guides and mm-hmm. service operator manuals then even overall operation and maintenance period uh, the different logs like basically uh, you will be monitoring that system how it is uh, operating and even uh, as a functional safety uh, considerations you should have the regular audits so every uh, each of every your process documentation in place so you should have that audit reports and different um, like proof test reports and even um, if you are going for any system enhancement or modification all these modification request and because of that modification uh, the impact and the impact analysis reports and approval statements and different verification test reports and including a complete like safety manual uh, you should mm-hmm. have for that particular system so it involves each and every documentation uh, during your entire life cycle uh, okay. like we will cover your overall management of the process management uh, functional safety management and all your uh, verification and validation plans so each and everything has to be documented over there yeah awesome yeah so thanks thanks kushal for that and uh, yeah i think we're sort of uh, uh, touching our end point here so uh, again like i think i learned a new thing today and uh, i hope our uh, audience did as well and they have some good takeaways related to functional safety itself right so let's see if we can pull up some uh, questions from our audience and uh, uh, i'll let either of you sort of like just take it whichever uh, you feel as okay right so so how does functional safety apply to systems that prevent uh, uh, by preventing environmental dam- uh, damage as well as severe financial loss so it's pretty generic but uh, but yeah i'll let you guys probably comment on that yeah so uh, uh, considering uh, the damages even um, basically functional safety is to ensure the damages in terms of human life and it might be with respect to your properties so basically this all is a loss um, like a major loss in terms of society and here uh, by designing uh, the required uh, safety functions this will lead to the system of uh, even uh, system goes into a failure state it will ensure there is no loss in terms of your any property in terms of the even it might be human life or any of these uh, damages and um, even if the system goes into failure state it will be in the predictable way that's what uh, uh, safety design will do mm-hmm. so ultimately okay. uh, we are addressing the like functional safety is addressing the same like to avoid the risk or to reduce the risk into a tolerance level so which is directly proportional to this the, the, whatever the question whatever is asked understood understood Okay, I think uh, another question that's probably following the same lines, right? Like, uh, so I think you might have brought this up already before in the discussion, but I'll, I'll probably still bring it up again, right? So, how does the use of uh, SIL certified equipment affect uh, uh, achieving the functional safety of that whole system itself? Uh, we cannot say that uh, one particular device which is fully certified or seal certified or functional safety certified will help to achieve the complete system safety because mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, there are 10 number of or 10 systems 10 components if you consider as an example and mm-hmm. uh, one critical system is not safety certified or that does not have any safety functions to uh, you know to handle the risk or something then we cannot say that it's completely you know the entire system is functionally safe so mm-hmm. we need to do a proper analysis of the entire system and we need to see what are the critical components and what are the critical components needs as uh, like safety functions implemented and uh, then only we can tell that the the complete system is functionally safe 
got it got it okay uh, uh, another question here i think maybe you, uh, uh, prashant you can sort of take this from our audience right like so uh, it it talks about the the reports itself that my, and the documentation itself that might be required before and during the process like uh, uh, how are these sort of reports generated itself are these auto auto generated reports as part of uh, existing designs or uh, how does this work Typically. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's uh, both. Like uh, even some of the reports, uh, whatever design documentations or reviews and all, it will be sort of manual uh, reports also. And mm-hmm. even uh, whatever um, required tests and all will run, it will be through the functional safety certified tools where mm-hmm. um, we will be ensuring uh, the core base, whatever we are uh, writing, the software, all these will run through that functional certifying tool. Uh, which will uh, give you the report like auto generated reports uh, to give that complete confidence complete uh, assurance that your software is meeting the standard requirements and it, that software is um, having no f- unexpected failures so mm-hmm. basically it's both like uh, some of, in some of the cases we have to generate manual reports and um, of course automated uh, tools will generate test reports and everything as well okay awesome i think maybe one more uh, um so this is another interesting one right how does uh, proof test affect the management of uh, the sil level throughout the life cycle any sort of inputs on that guys i think either of you can take it yeah so basically based on that uh, we will be knowing uh, the overall system failure rate and the overall system Uh, behavior based on that the required safety functions will actuate and will take care of the necessary um, uh, the safety uh, considerations or safety actions so it will ensure a system is uh, safe so basically yeah to okay. keep it short yeah okay okay maybe one last one so uh, you mentioned about uh, ic61511 right which is more specific to the process industry that you were uh, referring to right uh is there a certification process as such that is involved or uh, is it more of like a like a voluntary sort of uh, uh, compliance that uh, is involved in the functional safety itself yeah so um, basically this isc 61511 will uh, give you that uh, path to get it uh, get to follow the required guidelines or the path to ensure your uh, whatever design we are going to have uh, will meet the required safety so uh, even certification uh, for the required components or the required um, system is not only the functional safety related aspects it might be with respect to all different standards um, but yeah basically certification will be uh, available for required for this particular standard to ensure okay the system is meeting that particular process Awesome. Thanks, guys. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we're at the end now. So we'll probably just wind this up. We've uh, addressed these questions that have come up. So um, I know we could have gone a lot more about insights from uh, Prashant Sarang, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, uh, if you have any sp- specific questions, please feel free to sort of drop it in the comments. So we can always address it uh, on the go in the future as well, right? So and. Uh, my sincere thanks to you guys for coming on board and uh, doing this so uh, i hope uh, it was insightful for everyone as well and uh, i would say if I, if you have any specific requirements on implementing functional de- device uh, safety itself right so just feel free to contact us and i'm sure uh, prashant sarang and their fellow engineers would be happy to sort of uh, work with you on addressing these requirements and uh, yeah and so until next time i think goodbye and uh, we'll uh, see you for another insightful session on another topic yeah thanks guys thanks thank you thank you thank you all